I know some of you just sat down, but would you, would you stand up as we read the Word of God? Let's just let's show Him honor in this moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we know you're here. As soon as we unpacked the trailer and we began to, to start practicing for worship today, we felt your presence come in and enter the room. We've been in this place before. We've plowed and we've sown. This is fertile soil spiritually in this area. And Father, I pray for every heart in here that it would be fertile soil to receive the seed of your word today. That you would bring the growth that in this moment, we've plowed with worship and we've broken up the stony, hard surface with the plow of praise. And now our hearts, God, we're ready to receive from you. And we pray that we would receive a word from you today, each and every person in here today, that you have a word specifically for them. Every man, every woman, every father, every mother, every grandfather, every grandmother, every husband, every wife, every child, every son, every daughter, you have a word specifically for each of us today. You knew that we were going to be here today. And there's a word that you want to give and that you want your people, your sons, your daughters to receive today. I pray that we would receive that in the name of Jesus. The hard soil has been broken up and we're ready to receive today. Holy Spirit, come and do what only you can do. We give, you the, we give you the entire room. We give you this entire space. We give you that kid's space. What you're doing in the lives of those kids over there, we pray that there would be seed sown that's going to reap a harvest a hundredfold. We're ready for you to come. We're ready for you to deliver the word. We praise you for what you're going to do. We expect a miracle. It's a miracle when the seed goes into the ground, the seed dies, and it is raised new. It becomes something it could never be unless it dies and is buried. And the seed of your word is about to get buried within us. And what's going to come from that, it's going to reap a harvest a hundredfold in each and every person's life in here. We believe that. We expect a miracle. That's how your word works. It goes out, it gets sown, and it returns 30, 40, 80, 100 fold. The harvest is here. We're ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can sit down wherever you're at. We're glad you're here today. It's fun to be back in this area. We haven't been here in a while. I'm serious when I tell you there was something going on in the room almost instantly when we started worship today. Uh, we, we could feel it, each and every one of us here today. We, we knew God is going to do something today. Expect a miracle. Just come in. That's faith. Faith and hope. Just come in today and expect a miracle. No matter what you're in, no matter what you've been going through, whatever this last week was holding for you, it doesn't matter. It, it might have looked hopeless. It might have looked like death. It might have looked like nothing. It might have looked completely shattered and broken from what your expectation was for last week. But today, expect a miracle. That's what he hit me with this last week, this verse, glory to glory. Because there's things that we've been praying for and we've been talking about and we've been believing for and, and we've been sowing seed for. Some of you, you were here one of the last times we were here in this building. We sowed a seed together as a church, and we sowed a seed for a building, and we're still believing for that building. In fact, God had kind of brought us to this place where we were having conversations with the owner of a building. And we were having some conversations, and we even, uh, we even made an offer, and we kind of, man, I'm telling you, I felt good in my spirit. I felt like this is it. This is the harvest. It says in Genesis that Jacob, he reaped, he sowed and he reaped in the same year. I believe we had sowed for a building. We're about to reap a building. God was going to gift us a building. 
And all of a sudden, I got that email back on Tuesday, and it said, at this time, I'm going to have to politely decline. And then all of a sudden, I started to hear within our church that there's some people just getting hit with some sicknesses and getting hit with some things that just kind of came out of nowhere, some serious stuff, and people were ending up in the hospital. And I just felt like Tuesday night, I just felt discouraged. And I just kind of thought, man, all these things that, I, that we had sown for, that we had sown the seed for, I was like, God, I, I thought this was it. I, I kind of had it in my mind. This was the week we'd been expecting it. We'd been just, we, we've been seeing it and praying for it and believing for it. And, and when it didn't come to pass, I, I just felt that despair and that discouragement Tuesday night. But I also felt this. He prompted this verse to my mind. Second Corinthians or third Corinth or second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. We've been experiencing God's glory. We've been seeing amazing things. We've seen him move in this past year. And we've been walking in his presence. And in his presence, there's glory. Because that's who he is. He is glory. And we've seen him do amazing things. We've seen him do miracles. We've seen him heal. We've seen him deliver. We've seen him save. We've seen incredible things this past year. And sometimes we just think, oh, yeah, it's going to be easy. Every day is easy. And we just go from glory to glory. But sometimes you're in the two. Sometimes you go from one glory to two, and then it kind of pauses, and you're not at that next glory yet. That was what I felt on Tuesday. I felt like I was just stuck on two. I was stuck in between. Some of you here today, you're here today, and you're stuck in between. You've seen God move in the past. You know he can. You know he has. But right now, you are stuck in between where you're at today. And you're feeling that despair. You're feeling that discouragement. You're feeling like, God, you didn't show up the way I thought you were going to. You didn't show up the way I wanted you to, the way I desired you to, the way I've been asking and praying and fasting you for you to do. And you're right there on two. And the devil wants you to stop at two. The devil wants you to believe there's nothing else beyond this. This is it. You're going to live in the valley the rest of your life. You're going to live in despair. You're going to live in infertility. You're going to live in the dry places the rest of your life. He wants you to believe that today. But we go from glory to... Come on, we got to wake up a little bit. We go from glory to... That's what we do. You're his people. Go to Colossians. Go to Colossians 1. Oh, this is good. This is good. I'm not even there yet. You got to hear this. Colossians 1. When you are in the two, when you are in the in between, guess what? Colossians 1 verse 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So even when you're in the in between, who is in you? Christ, even when you're in the valley, even when you're in despair, even when you're walking in discouragement and you feel like it's completely hopeless, you're in the desert and there is no glory coming, guess what? You still got Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. So even when you can't see it yet, all the promises, everything you've been hoping and having faith for, when you don't see it, you know who's in you. Even in the two, he's in you. Hold on to that promise. He is the hope of glory. Somebody needed that today. Say amen. Come on. You needed that. I needed that. I needed to know that even in that moment when he didn't show up the way I thought he was going to, he's still in me. And that's worth more than anything in this world because he's the hope of the glory. We need hope in this season. That's what this season's all about. It was a season of waiting for God's people. They kept waiting and they kept waiting. How do you wait? You wait in hope. If you lose hope, you stop waiting. If you lose hope, you lose faith. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now I'm going to be jumping all over. My guy's doing slides. I'm sorry. Woo! Where are we at here? Man. 
Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We need hope. We need faith. We need, what do we need? Faith, hope, and love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. These three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. This is Paul talking about the armor again. He talks about it in Ephesians 6 also. But this hit me. There's a breastplate of faith and love. That's protection, right? We need to put on the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. What is that protecting? When we put on that piece of armor, it's, ho- it's protecting faith and love. Faith and love reside in your heart. These three things, we need to hold on to these three things. Faith, love, and we also need hope. Some of us, we're losing hope in this season. Guess what? That affects your faith and your love. Your faith begins to weaken as you lose hope. They all work together. They work in conjunction with each other. And so if your hope begins to fade, if you begin to lose hope, guess what else fades? Your faith and your love. And so all of a sudden, if you start to notice yourself in this season becoming a little more unloving, losing a little bit of that faith, and kind of drying out a little bit and kind of distancing yourself from the church, from God, from what God wants to do in your life, you need to remember all three of these work together. And so if your faith and love are fading, I bet it starts in the head because everything starts in the head. That's what the devil wants to come after. And that's why God, he tells us in his word, what do we put on? We put on the helmet to protect us. It's a helmet of the salvation, the hope of salvation. Some of us, we haven't been putting that on. We haven't been guarding our minds. And if you're not guarding your minds, he's going to get to your heart. That's what he does. That's how the enemy works. He's just whispering lies and discouragement to you in this season. He's telling you he's not going to show up. He's not real. You you don't need this. You don't need him. You don't need his word. But what the world has is better. What What everyone else in the world is doing, look, they're flourishing. They got great things going. You don't need any of this. Stop following after him. Stop trying to walk in obedience to him because he's not going to come through for you because he wants you to stop in the two. He wants to get you in between glories. He wants to catch you in the middle and say, see, he didn't show up like you thought he was going to. But let me tell you something. If you keep persevering, if you keep enduring, guess what? Guess what's coming? Glory. He is the hope of glory and he's in you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Praise him. Like he is worth praising Let me tell you something, man, Tuesday night, I'm in despair, I'm discouraged, I'm just kind of trying to hold on to some of these verses. I show up the next day, me and my buddy Brennan, we're showing up, and and we're showing up at the gym, and we do a workout together uh, in the mornings. And and we've been working out at this gym a long time, and we've gotten to know a lot of people there, and, and, um, you know, we've just been, you know, just talking about some of these people, and just kind of, you know, just praying for them, praying in the Spirit, and just hoping, like, maybe God will open some doors. Because if you remember, if you were with us back at the beginning of this year, we believe this is a year of doors. God's going to open the right doors, and he's going to close the doors that need to be closed in our life. And so we've just been praying for doors to be open with some of these people that we've made these connections with, these relationships with at the gym. And and it it just hasn't happened yet. I kind of shared one of my stories last week. I told you, I I asked a guy if he wanted prayer for healing. He said, I I appreciate what you do, but no thanks. And I was like, all right, well, whatever. And so here we are, I'm showing up at the gym with Brendan, and I'm kind of discouraged, I'm kind of down, I'm just like, I, you know, I'm feeling that attack, I'm feeling like I'm stuck in that in-between, and, and one of these dudes that we've been talking to and building a relationship with this year, he's lifting next to us, he's benching, and, and we're all kind of chatting, and, and all of a sudden he just kind of mentions, man, I've just been feeling kind of sick, I haven't been feeling good these last couple of weeks, and, and before he even gets done talking, Brendan says, you want us to pray for you? And I'm like, oh, great, here we go. This dude's like huge. He's like 6'4". He could play line in the NFL. Like, he's just like, you know, super intimidating kind of guy. And before he even gets done talking, Brendan's like, you, you want us to pray for you? And I'm like, here we go. Let's get rejected again. You know, I'm just, I'm down. I'm Debbie Downer this week. And this guy says, yeah, sure. And so we, we all stand up there. We all stand up there. And me and Brendan, we lay hands on him and we start praying over him. 
And all of a sudden, we get done praying. He's like, thanks, I, I needed that. And before he even gets done speaking, another guy comes up that we don't even know. He says, will you guys pray for me? We're like, yeah, let's go. Like, let's go. And we're getting ready. We're getting ready to lay hands on him. And then this other dude comes up and he says, I want in on this. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, man. He's doing something. We go from glory to glory. The Holy Spirit just fell in that moment. Praise God. Like he's doing it. But you got to be willing to take action. you got to be willing to do something. You can't just sit still and do nothing. He'll use your mistakes more than he'll use your inactivity. If we refuse to move, if we refuse to even try something, to take a step of faith, he can't use our inactivity. Be bold this week. Take a step. Sow. Sow a seed of faith. Whatever he's telling you to do this week and you think it sounds crazy, right now, write it down. Write it down in your phone. Write it down in your journal. Whatever you got. You, right now, the Holy Spirit's prompting some of you to do something crazy that you've been denying, that you haven't been wanting to do this week. Write it down and say, I'm going to do it this week. I'm going to have that conversation. I'm going to sow that seed of faith this week. And he's going to bring a harvest. That it was that was one of the most powerful moments. That was we we didn't we probably stood there we we prayed for about 30, 40 minutes. We didn't get any kind of workout done that day. But man, it was the best day I, we've ever had at the gym. I told Brendan after, like when we were done, I was like, I, I've been walking this track at this gym, like as my warm up, and just praying, praying in my mind and praying in my spirit for these last two years. And I, I didn't know what God was doing, but God's just been sowing and plowing that entire time in the spirit. And sometimes we don't always see it in the natural, and we want to see it come to pass in the natural right away. We want to see it right now. When we pray, when we're praying in the spirit, we, we just believe and we're like, God, it should happen now. It should happen in our time. But sometimes we go from glory to glory and we don't know how long that too is going to be, that in between is going to be. But we keep pressing on and we keep moving forward and we keep believing for more. We keep believing that he's going to show up again because guess what? When you draw near to him, he draws near to you. And so we keep believing and pressing on that if we keep drawing more and more near to him, he's going to keep showing up more and more. There was seed been, that's been sown in the spirit and it came to pass in the natural and there's more things that are going to come from that moment there that day keep following him keep pressing in because we have christ in us and he is the hope of glory we need hope in this season we need it this is a hard season some of us right now you're feeling pressed financially and you're feeling like, I don't, I don't see a way out. Hold on to hope. Some of you, you're here today, and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Some of you, you're here today, and you don't know what to do next. I'm telling you today, sow a seed. Whatever you have, sow a seed and expect a miracle. Because guess what? When you sow, you reap a harvest. That's what it says in his word. And we hold on to his word. Because his word is what gives us hope, and it's what gives us faith, and it's what gives us love. His word is living and active. His word is living in us. That's who Christ is. Christ is the word. And so he is within you. He is living and active and moving. And so sometimes we just need to sow a seed. And so today, some of you, you just need to sow a seed. The offering, that's why we have offering. It's not something you owe. It's something you sow. And we are sowing and we're expecting. Guess what? When we sow, we know we're going to reap a harvest. God is going to come through bigger, greater, beyond anything we could have asked, hoped, or imagined. That's who he is, and that's what he does. I couldn't have dreamed up what happened on Wednesday morning this week, but it was better and greater and more than I could have ever asked or imagined. I, I could be, I, I've prayed in my mind. I didn't know what I was praying. I, I knew what I was praying for, and sometimes it's kind of small and, and whatever. But when you pray in the Spirit, you don't always know what you're praying for. And so there were things that happened that day that I believe when I was praying in the spirit in alignment with God's will and his word, there were things I was praying for that I didn't even know he was going to bring to pass. One of those guys, he, he was not connected to the church and he, he got my phone number that day. And I, I think Brennan got the other guy's number and, and they were both like, let us know when church is like, we want to come to church. 
Like, we want to start, like, we want to get plugged in. We want to get connected. You don't know what he's going to do. But if you will sow a seed by faith, if you will move by faith and hope and expect a miracle, he's going to move. That's why we, we have a place, like, locked in that I know we can be for Christmas Eve services. But I told these guys today, I don't want to pin God down in a box. Because even though that guy said no in the natural I don't know what door God is going to open this week, but I'm expecting another miracle. Like, I'm just expecting it now every week. He's going to do something. He's always doing something. We have to learn how to look. We have to, look, we have to learn how to look and see through the spirit and not the natural. There are things that he's doing that we don't see, that he is at work in, that he has his hands on, that we can't even fathom or imagine but we are believing that he's doing something behind the scenes. He's doing something in the unseen, and we're expecting miracles week after week because that's what he does. That's who he is. Oh, man. 2 Kings 4. Let's go. We're going back to the Old Testament now. 2 Kings 4. Second Kings 4, chapter 1, or chapter 4, verse 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of prophets cried out to Elisha. Elisha was a prophet. He was a man of God. Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Where, were this, where was this woman right now? She was in the two. She was in the in-between. Here she is telling this man of God, Creditor is coming to take my two sons. My husband is dead. My sons are going to be slaves. I'm going to be left alone. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me. Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Some of you right now, you're here today, and you feel like you got nothing left. You feel like you, you got zero in the bank, and you're just trying to make it to the next payday. Or you're just trying to get that next job. You're just trying to get something. You're just trying to survive one more day. Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Gather every vessel you can. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and she shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. They went and they got every vessel they could, every vessel in the neighborhood. She poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. And then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. She was in the in-between. Her husband was dead. The creditor was coming to take her sons to be slaves. She had nothing left but a little bit of oil in the house. That's for some of us today. We, we got nothing left but a little bit of oil in the house. Even some of you, when I, when I said sow a seed today, guess what? The seed, it isn't for me. It isn't for our church. It's for you. Because when you sow, what does he do? He takes that oil and he multiplies it. That's who he is. That's what he does. Some of you today, he wants you to take that step to, today to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to trust you. All I got is $8 left. I got $8 of oil left, but I'm going to trust it with you. I'm going to put it in your hands, Lord, and I'm going to believe you for a hundredfold. I'm going to believe that you're going to fill every vessel. The oil you need, it's in the house. That's why he says, what does he say in Psalm 92? Those who are planted in the house will flourish like the cedars of Lebanon, like palm trees. If you get planted in God's house, guess what? Everything you need is in the house. Every time we read about the oil, what, what's the oil connected to in Scripture? It's connected to the Holy Spirit. 
So when we read oil in the Old Testament, you need to understand, there is a connection there to the Holy Spirit. When you're connected, when you're planted in the house, all the oil you need is here and more. You can get filled with the oil today. Everything you need is in the house. And so when you're caught in the in-between, when you're going from glory to, and you're not there yet, the temptation is to leave the house. The temptation is to get uprooted and say, I'm not finding the answers or what I need in God's house. And so I'm going to go to some of these other houses in the world. I'm going to try and find what I need, what I'm looking for, what I want, what I crave. But everything you need is already in the house. All you need is the Holy Spirit. He is the hope of glory. And he's going to carry you from glory to glory. That's what he does. Because he is in you, and when he's in you, he carries you. That's what he does, and that's what he's doing. For some of you, you have to keep going. You wanted to stop today. In fact, you didn't even want to be here today. You wanted to sit at home. You wanted to stay, you know, nice, comfy, cozy. But you're kind of like, I can't even use the excuse like they're too far away. They're in North Omaha. No, we're back out west for a little bit, baby. We're back for a minute. You can't use that excuse. But let me tell you something. No matter where we are, it doesn't matter if you got to travel one mile or a hundred. It's worth it to get to God's house because there's oil in the house. Praise God. Come on. Praise God right there. Oh, man. Oh, there's so much oil in here right now. He's moving. He is speaking. Write it down. Hold on to these promises he's given you. Don't stop in the in-between. Don't stop it, too, because there's glory coming, and there's glory inside of you. Man. Romans 10, 8 through 13. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. The word. Who is the word? Jesus. He is in you, in your mouth and in your heart. Your head and your heart. Your head and your heart. Get that down. Put on that armor every day. Put on the helmet, the hope of salvation. Put on that breastplate of righteousness that protects faith and love within you. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You have to confess it. You have to verbally say it out loud. That's what begins to build you up and strengthen you. That is what saves you. That's what it says right there. Some of us, we, we just keep everything up here too often. And when you keep it all up here and you don't speak it out, you're missing out on a blessing. You're missing out on transformation. Verse 10, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. For something to get from the head to the heart, you got to speak it out. It's not traveling. Guess what? It's not traveling down when you read something or when you hear something. Like you're hearing a message today. You're hearing the word of God today. It's not traveling from here to here inside of you. You got to speak it out. You got to begin to declare it because guess what? The power of life and death is in the tongue. And if you begin to declare it, it's going to transform you. You're going to know it up here, but until you declare it out here, it's not going to get to here. You have to declare it. This is how it travels. What you're receiving right now, it's coming into your head. You're receiving it through your ears, through your eyes. You're receiving a word from God, but you got to take this home today or at the end of service during ministry time, and you got to declare it. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is in me. Jesus is the hope of glory because that's how it travels from here to here. It doesn't travel. Like we just want to keep our faith and everything nice and clean and just on the inside. Don't talk about it. Don't have conversations. You might offend somebody or it's kind of weird if you talk about it or if you pray out loud. And so we just keep everything in here and we just internalize it. And you're like, why do I have such little faith? Why do I have so much unbelief? It's because you're not letting it travel. You got to let it travel. In, in baseball, my, my father-in-law, he does a lot of baseball coaching, and, and he's helping my daughter with her swing right now. And one of the things he coaches on is sometimes when the ball is coming in, we just want to go get it. And, and, and what you got to do is he says you got to let it travel. You got to let it come to you, and you just got to let it travel and let the ball go. And, and so what I'm telling you right now is if you want to release something great in your life, if you want to build up faith, you got to let the word travel. You got to let it come in and you got to send it right back out. When it comes into you, you got to send it out so it can get in here. So it can begin to build up your inner man. Okay? 
That's how we build ourselves up. That's how we build each other up. That's why if you come on Tuesday nights to our prayer meetings, we pray and we prophesy over each other. Guess what? When words are traveling out and we're not just like thinking good thoughts, like good thoughts, you know, good vibes, like, like we're just all kind of sitting there quiet, like everybody just, nobody talk, nobody do anything out loud, just like, I was thinking really good things about you, like, I was praying good things in my head for you, Brandon, like, that's not doing anything. No, 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 we got to let it travel from our head to our mouth out, and then it comes back in and begins to build us up, it begins to build others up. Let it travel. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, verse 11, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. As you begin to believe, as your faith is built up, you won't be put to shame. I felt zero shame circled up with five guys praying for each other on Wednesday in a public space. Why? Why? Because we've got the Holy Spirit in us, and he is worth it. And other people, they need the water. They need the oil. You got the water and the oil that people need, that people are hungry, that people are thirsty for. Stop holding it in and hoarding it for yourself. Begin to declare it out loud. Verse 12, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does call mean in the Greek? Just say it in your head. No, call, declare it, say it. Romans 10, 14 through 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? We got to hear it. And that means somebody has to declare it. Yeah, Alex, that's your job. Yeah, Andrew, that's your job. No, 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 that's of the body. That's the church. You got a mouth. He gave you a mouth for a reason. Not to go scream your head off at a Husker game. I mean, you can do that. That's fine. They're not that good. There's not much to scream about. This is more fun. Shout it from the mountaintop. Declare it with your mouth. Otherwise, how will they hear? And how shall they hear without a preacher? We're called to preach the good news, to do the work of an evangelist. Paul gave that charge to Timothy. That charge is for all of us. We are all called to do the work of an evangelist, to go and declare it. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Well, I just, you know, people are going to see Christ in me through my actions. No, declare it. Speak it. Yeah, you're going to live it out, but there's, that's become a cop-out for people. That has. And so I'm telling you right now, I, I'm, you've used that as permission to not share or declare or say anything. But I'm telling you right now, today in this house, I, I, I'm taking that off. That can be in addition to, but that's not the only way that you share the gospel. Okay? In this house, I'm saying it's got to be more than just, oh, man, I'm just, I'm just living it out, and hopefully people see it in me, and I just, I got the best of intentions. No, 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 that's secondary. Primary, he says, is that we will speak it out, that we will declare it, that we will go and make disciples, that we'll declare the gospel everywhere we go. Verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I, I, I just, I got to go back one more time. Like no, nobody hears you when you're serving or when you're doing something and, uh, that's great. Like, I'm glad you're serving. I'm glad you're doing stuff. And I, I'm glad, like, you got a servant's heart and you want to serve people and just show people Jesus by your actions. But they don't hear you handing out food at the Open Door Mission. They don't hear you handing out a coat to somebody that's cold. Like, do those things. But that's not the only thing we do. That can't be an excuse anymore for us to remain silent you got to speak and serve. You can't just serve anymore. you got to speak and serve. They go hand in hand together. 
2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The battle is in the head. That's where he's trying to steal your hope. That's where he's trying to quench your faith to snuff out the flame of the Holy Spirit that is burning within you. It's a battle in the head and the mind. Put on the helmet of the hope of salvation. Build up your inner man. Speak and declare God's word over your life and let it build you up and strengthen you and fortify you. And you tear down every argument, everything that comes from the devil. That's what he does. He's trying to whisper thoughts constantly to you. He's trying to draw you away. He's trying to get you to believe that when you're in the in-between, this is everything. This is all your life will ever be. And he wants you to stop because that's the only way he can win. He can't affect your free will. He can't affect your choice. He can't affect anything. He can't steal salvation from you. All he can do is try to deter you, try to distract you, try to get you torn up and in despair and depressed and believe him. That this is everything and this is all your life will ever be. And that's a lie from the devil. And so we take those thoughts captive. Our battle's not in the flesh. It's in the mind. It's in the spirit realm. And so we take them captive and we make them obedient to Christ. And so when the devil comes after you this week, and right now you're at the end of this service, you're, you're going to be sowing a seed of faith. You're going to be sowing a seed of expecting God to do something miraculous this week. And guess what? He's going to come and he's going to try and steal that seed. That's what it says. It says the birds came and they, they stole the seed that was sown by the sower that was on the ground. It was on top of the ground. It hadn't had a chance yet to get down underneath the ground and begin to take root. And the birds came and stole it. That's what the demons are going to do this week. They're going to come after you and they're going to whisper lies. And you're going to think those lies are from you and they're true. And they're, that's just who I am. And I, I, life's just always going to be like this. No, no, no. That's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from the devil. And so you rebuke it, amen, right there. Here we go. You rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and you command that voice to leave, and you ask, Holy Spirit, I want you to be the only spirit that speaks in my life. No other spirit is welcome here. No other spirit is welcome in this church. No other spirit is welcome within us. We are temples of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. And so we take every thought captive that is not from him. And if you're not sure, I'm not, I'm not sure what thought is from him. Find another believer and begin to ask for help, for prayer, for discernment. When you're starting to believe something, let me just help you right now. Some of you, you've had a thought of suicide recently. You take that thought captive right away and you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That's not you. You are not suicidal. The devil wants you to believe you are, but no, you are not suicidal. That is not from the Holy Spirit. That's not you. That's a whisper. That's a lie from the enemy. And he wants you to take it and believe it and say, I don't matter. My life doesn't matter. Nobody cares about me. Those are lies because Christ cares about you. This church cares about you. There are people that love you. There are people that want you here. They desire you. They desire to see your life be full like the cedars of Lebanon, they desire to see you flourish. So you don't believe those lies. That's not you. That's not who you are. That's a lie from the enemy. We take those thoughts captive. Hebrews 6, 19 through 20. Worship team, you can come up as we get ready to close out here. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Hope is an anchor for your soul. We are spirit, soul, and body. We're three parts. When you look through Scripture, that's how every time the authors in Scripture describe us as spirit, soul, and body. There are three separate parts, all intertwined, all connected, but three separate parts. The soul is where your mind and your emotions and your will resides. That's the battle in the mind. When I'm talking about the helmet of the hope of salvation, that's what we put on to protect our soul. The enemy wants to get at you, and he wants to attack you through the soul. He wants to attack you through the mind. But hope is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hope is the anchor of the soul. And so that's why every day when you wake up, if you've been struggling in your mind, if you've been struggling in your thoughts, 
when you wake up tomorrow or when you get in the car today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say, say it out loud. And you'd be like, no, that's crazy. Say it out loud. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Believe that you're holding a helmet and believe that you're putting it on and you're putting on the helmet of the hope of salvation. Do this with the entire armor of God. Act like you're... I'm putting on the breastplate of righteousness that protects faith and love. I'm putting on the belt of truth this week. I'm putting on boots of peace. And you begin to just go and you act it out and you do it and you declare it over your life. I'm picking up the shield of faith. I'm picking up the sword of the Spirit. And I'm going to carry this and I'm going to walk with it this week. But put that helmet on first before anything when you wake up tomorrow. Because there's a battle for our minds. There's a battle for our souls. And the enemy keeps trying to lie and keeps trying to steal the seed of God's word in your life. Don't let him this week. He can't get in. He can't get past that helmet. He has no access. Hebrews 11, verse 12. This is about Abraham. Abraham. Therefore, from one man, you know the story of Abraham? Like he, father of many nations. Like when you look up at the stars, he said, so will be your descendants, even more so, innumerable. Therefore, from one man, Hebrews 11, 12, I love this. And him as good as dead. He was as good as dead. Like, that's where some of you, you, that's where I was. I felt like that. I felt that Tuesday. I was like, Shh. I was such a downer. Like, I was. Like, I repent. I repent. That's what it feels like sometimes. You just feel like it, it's as good as dead. It's as good as over. I can't go on anymore. There, there's no hope. Guess what? There's hope because hope is in you. The hope of glory. The next glory is coming, and he's going to carry you there. He's going to carry you there. Him as good as dead. We're born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Man. Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Don't forget, you're grafted into this family. He's the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. When you're in that in-between, you can't see it. It doesn't exist. It's even hard to imagine, but you begin to call it and declare it. Because guess what? We are going to have a building. We are. He's going to give us a home. He's going to give us a place to work out of. We won't get stuck there. We won't get trapped there and say, no, this is the only place ministry happens. We're going to have a home to work out of, a home to work through. But he's going to give us a base. And even though we don't see it this week, it's coming. Expect a miracle. It's coming. Whatever you've been expecting, ask him today. Expect it today. If it's healing, expect it today. Ask somebody to join you and come into agreement in prayer. Ministry team, I want you guys to come up and get ready. Ask somebody on the ministry team, hey, I just want you to pray for this. I'm believing for healing today. I'm believing for somebody that's far today to come home today. For somebody to declare who Jesus is again today. Begin to declare it. Come into agreement. You just need the ministry team today. Not because you need an intercessor. Because we have the intercessor in Christ. No, no, no. You just need to declare it out loud to somebody today. Or if there's somebody in the room, you need to go and you know them, you love them, and you believe, then they're going to come into agreement with me on this. I need somebody to, to, to come to war with me on this, to come to prayer with me on this. Find somebody in this moment of ministry time as we're coming into this moment. Sow a seed of faith today. Expect a miracle this week. He's going to move this week. He's already been moving. One of our girls on the worship team, she got healing this morning that she needed in her arm. 
There is movement happening. The Spirit is going out. I'm telling you, sow a seed of faith this week. Verse 18. Who contrary to hope. It's contrary to hope. What happened in Abraham's life? It was contrary to hope. He was at the age where you shouldn't even be hoping anymore. He was. In hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. We're blessed as a church. We have great finances. But when I go to some of these buildings and I tell them like, hey, here's our offer. It is contrary to hope when they look at our financial situation. For how much the building is worth, I'm telling you, it is contrary to hope. But guess what? I'm not done hoping. I'm not done believing. Because I know what God is doing. And He wants to multiply this. Would you stand up, church, as we get ready to worship here? There are people that are experiencing transformation. There's people that are giving their lives to Jesus. There's people in this room today. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to confess with your mouth. Go find somebody on the prayer team today and do that. Declare. Say it. I want to say it out loud today. Jesus is Lord of my life. I'm coming back home today. I want him. Some of you, you need to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need to get a fresh filling of his Holy Spirit. Go and ask somebody for prayer today. Say, I want the Holy Spirit living. I want living waters running out of me today. Expect a miracle today. Some of you need healing. Go and ask for prayer today. Today's the day. Expect the miracle. He's coming through. He's coming in waves today. Giants are being slain. They have no authority here. Zero authority in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Woo! So shall your descendants be, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead (laughs) since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, it was death. When people looked at them, they saw the walking dead. But God saw life. God saw nations, millions and billions. That's what God saw. Whatever you're seeing this week, and it looks like death, it looks hopeless, I'm telling you, begin to declare life over it. The power of life and death is in the tongue. He did not waver at the promise of God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Hope is the anchor of the soul. Let that anchor down to your heart. It will build your faith. It will hold you on to the rock. So when the waves come, when the chaos is swirling around you, you will stay steady in the storm. The waves can't move you. The anchor of hope is within you. Drop it down. Hold on firm. Because you're not dead yet. You have Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. You've got hope in you. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said,